It is a proud thing to be in her shed. It's a wonderful thing to be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord. Now, let me share a couple of things with you about doorkeepers that you don't know. Doorkeepers will stand when no one else is standing. That's right. Y'all right. better stay with me. See, a doorkeeper will stay in the right position whether you want them to move or not. There is no such thing as enticing an individual that is called a doorkeeper. What they do is that they actually make a sign to somebody that has been assigned to be the key usher. And that particular person will move instead of them moving off of their post. See, it's a wonderful thing to be an usher because you can learn so much from them. See, when you come into the household of faith, it is necessary for you to be greeted by his presence. And his presence normally dwells in those of them that are your keepers. I just came to just set the record straight that it is a good thing to be a doorkeeper. So turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, stand on what you know. A doorkeeper is an individual that studies those positions and those signs and they study everything that is necessary for them to be an effective doorkeeper. So when they stand, they always stand on what they know. They're never going to be enticed by the fact that you need a fan. They're going to send someone to give you a fan while they keep their actual post. Not like most believers. Anytime that you find yourself not being able to move or not receiving the proper directions, you will give up your Christianity and you'll walk into a position that God has not called you to walk in. And then when you look back, nobody's standing in your place. It's a good thing to be a doorkeeper. Now let's look at what James says about it. I bet y'all ain't never seen no doorkeeper in James have. But I'm finna show him to you. In the book of James, chapter 1, it says, James, a bond servant of God. And of the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I got to stop right there. All right. James is an individual that wrote this particular letter. Come on, and when he wrote this letter, he identified who he was without anybody having to identify who he is. All right. He said that I am James. I am a slave, a bond servant to of God. And of God, that means right here, the deity of God. I am a bond servant to the Most High. I am a bond servant to Adonai. I am a bond servant to Jehovah Nisi. I am a slave to God. And then he says, and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not only am I a slave to the deity of God, but I am tailored and I am, and I move by his anointing. I move by his presence and his presence alone. So therefore, there's nothing you can do nor anything you can say that will make me move away from being a slave to the deity of God moving by the power and the anointing of Jesus Christ. Can't y'all see those Ursha standing? Standing on that post. You turn around and look at them and tell them you need a hand. And they look at the key Ursha. And they make that sign and tell that key Ursha that we need a hanky and we need to give it to that lady. There's nothing you're ever going to be able to do to make them move out of that position to change their identity. James said that I am a bond servant to the deity of God and I move by his anointing and his power only. So let's look at the next part. He said to the 12 tribes, I bring you this greeting. The next verse, and I believe I'm reading from a different version, but your version might say, count it all joy. All right. Now, I ain't going to make it too much past this. <laughs> but it says, in my Bible, 
5 and says, Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter thy various trials. I think your Bible says, Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations. Yeah, yeah. Knowing this, that the testing of your faith worth it patience. I think that's what it says, right? Okay, well, let me try to break this down to you so that everybody can clearly understand. The lesson that we're learning from being a doorkeeper is to always make sure that you stand on what you know. If you don't know anything, then you'll fall for anything. Am I correct? So they, because of the fact that they know who they are, they stand just like Jesus, just like uh, James wrote this Bible and wrote this book. He was telling us, I understand who I am. Now this word count right here means command. It's not one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's not what this word count means. This word right here, count, means to command. And when it says count it all, joy, it means everything that you have encountered, everything that you have been through, everything that comes your way, count it all. And joy right here means to be made happy. So in other words, right here, James is saying, because of the fact that I know that I'm a bond servant of Jesus Christ, yeah. I also know that I move according to the anointing of God. There is nothing that you can do to me or say to me that will make me believe that I'm anything less. And if you bring anything my way, guess what I'm going to do? I am going to command my own self help. Yeah, 
know what I'm saying. You just get what you deserve, amen? But diverse temptations has nothing to do with anything that you've done. So the Lord is telling us right here is that when they come down this aisle and they decide not to follow you to the road, you can command yourself happy and don't worry about them sitting five rows behind you while you still walking. That ain't got nothing to do with you. So, let me just back up just a little bit. Because I just heard somebody say, I didn't ask for this. I didn't sign up for all this, you know. You know, got that man. And he was a woo-woo man. Good at the very beginning. But now you have said, I didn't sign up for this. You got that job. And it's taking you through hell and giving you the blues. And you're saying, I didn't sign up for this. Then you went and collected some new friends. See, these are not diverse temptations. These are your choices. And if anybody heard me the last time I came to Texas County, I told them that we're living in a season now where God is granting all of our requests. You better make sure your requests line up with the will of God. Because if it doesn't line up with the will of God, then you're going to be in hell by yourself. And God is going to make sure that you receive grace and mercy, the same thing that the drug dealers receive, the same thing that the prostitutes receive. That's what you're going to get. But the diverse temptations, he gives you the authority to command yourself happy in any kind of situation that has nothing to do with you. We're living in a time and season where God is saying, I am God, I need you to stand on what you know. You better stand on the fact that I'm Jehovah Nisi when you think you're going crazy. You better, I'm your parent whether you know it or not. You better stand on the fact that he's Jehovah Rapha when you ain't got nothing. He's Jehovah Shalom when you when you need some peace from back here. Not up here, but you need peace from back here. I need to be able to pull it forward. You better stand on what you know. James says, count it all joy when you fall into situations that are, have nothing to do with you. Use the authority and the power that I have given you so that you will be able to stand. And the reason why you need to do this is because, girl, I'm trying to teach you something. I'm trying to make sure that you understand that it is necessary for you to have patience to be on my team. You gotta have patience to stand at the door to be an usher or to serve somebody that don't want to be served. You have to make sure that you have patience to stand before people that would never follow your lead and think that you're less than. But a believer that stands as a doorkeeper is one that is a bond servant of God that moves by his anointing and his power that has the authority to command themselves 